Our entrance entity on this morning is on page 222. 222. Be my protector, O God, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me, for the sake of your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When the Lord saw how great was man's wickedness on earth and how no desire that his heart conceived was ever anything but evil, he regretted that he had made man on the earth and his heart was grieved. So the Lord said, I will wipe out from the earth the men whom I have created and not only the men but also the beasts and the creeping things and the birds of the air, for I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for you alone in this age have I found to be truly just. Of every clean animal, take with you seven pairs a male and its mate, and of the unclean animals one pair, a male and its mate. Likewise, of every clean bird of the air seven pairs, a male and a female, and of all the unclean birds one pair, a male and a female. Thus you will keep their issue alive over all the earth. Seven days from now I will bring rain down on the earth for forty days and forty nights. And so I will wipe out from the surface of the earth every moving creature that I have made. Noah did just as the Lord had commanded him. As soon as the seven days were over, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The Lord will bless his people. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty. The voice of the Lord is majestic. 
the God of glory thunders, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. Alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. Jesus enjoined them, watch out, guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They concluded among themselves that it was because they had no bread. When he became aware of this, he said to them, why do you conclude that it is because you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or comprehend? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and not see, ears and not hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand? How many wicker baskets full of fragments you picked up? They answered him, Twelve. When I broke the seven loaves for the four thousand, how many full baskets of fragments did you pick up? They answered him, Seven. He said to them, Do you still not understand? The Gospel of the Lord. Heads up, obviously, tomorrow we'll have our Ash Wednesday Mass. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a longer Mass. I don't know if we have music at the 7 o'clock or not. I have to ask Jeff if we do or not, but uh, we have the ashes uh, as well. So it'll take a little bit longer, so you might want to just kind of plan for that uh, for the 7 o'clock a.m. Mass. And we also have a 12 o'clock Mass, p.m., and we have an 8 o'clock as well, but that's just for the school kids, and then 5.30 uh, tomorrow as well. I thought you also liked the fun little uh, note. Uh, we received a, a little note from the uh, Chancery and the uh, United States bishops are making a very small change in the opening prayer uh, starting tomorrow. So typically, whenever we conclude the prayer, it sounds like this. Uh, Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. So the, in the Latin, the one is not there. It says one God forever and ever. And so uh, there's a petition that says the word one is not really needed, actually, because the end of the prayer refers to Jesus, and it should just say God forever and ever. So they've asked all priests to just remove the word one, and it's just God forever and ever. So today is the last day we use the one God forever and ever. And you know, your priest always had a little sense of humor with everything, so I wrote back to them, to the uh, chancellor, and I said, would it be per permissible to do this? I said, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, best God forever, forever and ever. Or is that too many evers? And she just wrote back and said, Oh, Father Andre, we just love you. <laughs> just that sense, a little sense of humor you can have about everything. Uh, the first reading here, so we continue to march through the book of Genesis uh, tomorrow. Unfortunately, we'll break sort of protocol with the narrative here. And so we're going to leave the book of Genesis for the season of Lent, which it kind of makes me sad because it's like, ah, oh, we're just kind of getting into it. So once Lent and Easter are over and we go back to ordinary time, which basically is close to summer or late spring, then we're going to pick back up with Genesis again. And then by that time, you'll forget everything, right? So you're like, what are we talking about again? So this is the last day for the book of Genesis for uh, quite some time. Uh, this actually is one of the saddest lines, isn't it, in the Holy Scriptures where the Lord is very uh, grieved that he made the human race. In other words, uh, things have gotten so bad, uh, the immorality has gotten so bad uh, that uh, with murder and stealing and 
uh, just everything else, the Lord is actually grieved uh, that he had made uh, the human race. Uh, this weekend, we're also going to hear about Noah uh, in the first reading and the covenant that God makes with Noah with the rainbow or the bow that he puts uh, in the clouds. And I'll talk a little bit more this weekend about the covenant with Noah. But the ancient church fathers uh, saw Noah's ark uh, as, in some sense, a, a foreshadowing of baptism, uh, that you and I are baptized and brought uh, into the ark, the church, and the ark has been a symbol of the church, uh, that's the kind of the remnant of God's good order, or God's um, beauty of life and creation, and did you notice in terms of the animals, uh, the clean animals get seven pairs, and the unclean animals uh, get only one pair, and you might say, what, what is going on there? So the clean animals are the ones that are um, uh, capable of being sacrificed, right? So they can be offered up. They're clean and they're acceptable in God's uh, eyes or in his heart. So you see this um, partic this preparatory phase of I'm bringing on these extra pairs of animals because I have to sacrifice some of them. And so Noah is acting like a priest here in some sense where he's offering sacrifices to the Lord, those uh, pairs of clean animals that are there. So on this ark, there's a couple things happening here. One is it's a remnant of God's uh, good order and life that's there, that's going to be preserved, kind of like a Garden of Eden floating uh, through the waters in some sense. We see sacrifice that's happening here. And so we see kind of God's will for the human race and the early church fathers also saw the ark with the wood as a foreshadowing of the wood of the cross as well. So the sense of um, with the church is saved by the sacrifice of Jesus. And uh, I don't need to tell you that it's getting uh, uglier and uglier out there and more and more messy. But really, our, that shouldn't surprise us, really. Uh, that, but rather, we should really focus heavily on the church and renewing the church and this remnant of God's creation or good order, this place of truth, uh, of life, where there's sacrifice, where there's right relationship, and there's a sense of uh, praising and worshiping God. Uh, in, if we do that, we can be absolutely confident that God will preserve the church just as he preserved Noah's Ark. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, now let us stand in confidence and let us turn to our Heavenly Father and offer Him our prayers. For the church, that each disciple of the Lord may have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart that understands him, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the God of glory may thunder in the hearts of world leaders, moving them powerfully to works of justice, life, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may never grieve the heart of God by unworthy thoughts and deeds, but be found truly just in his eyes as Noah was. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have asked our prayers, for the suffering and the oppressed and the weary, that our loving intercession may lighten their burdens today, we pray to the Lord. Lord that our dear departed loved ones may quickly be purified of every stain adoring the Lord in holy attire in the company of his angels. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for Tom Morris, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
Lord, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bless you, Lord of all creation, for your goodness. We have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord of all creation, for your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right, right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, our Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Great, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly, heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. We do have Bible study today, so it's 9 o'clock in the morning or 6.30 this evening, whether in person or live stream. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, 